as I said, I just deposited it in there and I've tried like my best to put build up savings, but I can't do it to save my life. Like I can't, I'm trying, okay. but let me guess you're not budgeting. No, I'm not. I'm tr like, how long have you been watching? I mean, about a couple of months, but like, and I don't, I don't want to make excuses here. Like I don't like I've tr I try. Well, it's good to know the reason why. You're yeah. not saying it's excusable because of the reason it's why. Not. It's, it's not. Really but what's not. the reason why? What were you going to say? It's just, I get so much anxiety over numbers and everything. Mm. I don't want to cry. It's okay. It's okay to cry. The, uh, the overwhelming nature of financial situations and everything like that built up anxiety and these emotions and it's beyond natural you know, in the position you're in. So it's okay. So what's what's the underlying anxiety around the numbers? Could you just, speak to that more? I'm just scared. I'm just scared to look at them and how much is going to affect me and mm. I'm I'm trying very hard to like bring a cohesive thoughts right now. I'm sorry. Okay. It's <sighs> It's really okay. It's just... Uh, <sighs> okay. You're okay. It's been a really, really bad situation I've been in for the past couple of years. It's just... <sighs> whenever I... Um, whenever I moved out of my um, apartment with my sister, I was living on my own, and... I was doing my best to budget and you know those habits right there they were the same thing back then like and I tried budgeting I tried like putting in savings but I just I kept making stupid decisions and it's just I think it's just because like over those couple years I I just I got so much anxiety over it because I mix, I kept making such stupid decisions because, and again, it's not an excuse again. It's just, I was struggling so hard with my mental health. You're not excusing yourself. It's okay. You're, you're giving us valid reasons. It's okay. It's, what are your mental health struggles? I am diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder. Okay. Back then, I thought I had just depression. I was, I was... Um, diagnosed with depression when I was 14. I went to a psychiatric hospital for a week and mm. and um, recently I got medicated to handle my bipolar disorder and God. there's a there's a term um, there's a term for people who have bipolar disorder. It's called anagnosia, I think. It's where you don't understand how you don't understand how you have bipolar disorder. It's pretty common in um, p patients with Alzheimer's because I don't know if you've ever been um, known a person with Alzheimer's. They don't. They legitimately don't understand that yeah. they have Alzheimer's. They just think, "Oh, I'm fine." And for the longest time, I, I don't know if it's true. Like, I don't. I mean, there's no scientific backing for it, but I feel like that was causing me to just make the worst decisions oh. in my life. Like, like whenever I I came into this job, I was like super happy. I was like making some good money every month, and then when COVID hit, it was, oh, it was so terrible. Like we were making sales up the up the wazoo every day. Like we were making 20, 30 K sales every day. And I was working 50 to 60 hours a week, working so much overtime. And also I was working as an, a manager every few days because of whole like management changes and everything. And I was getting paid $15 an hour. Well, and at the time, and it was just such a detriment on me. It's like, oh great, I'm making money. But when I make so much money, I don't know how to handle it. Like, that's where I kind of, kind of fell off because whenever everything was stable for me, I was able to budget right. And then whenever I got more and more money, I just kept being so, like, careless with it. And, and I realize now it's just how much it's affected me over the past few years because, you know, again... I, whenever I started taking medication again, it was like taking blinders off a horse. I never knew how much it affected me. Oh, yeah. Like, like you saw how many charge offs I have out there. It's so, it's, it's so terrible the position I put myself in because COVID, whenever I was, I mentioned that I'm, I was going to school for film, whenever COVID hit, I was in the middle of my internship and then they told me, hey, because of COVID we, and liability reasons, we can't have you going back in the office. And that was my last credit to graduate. And I just, 
I gave up on it. Yeah. And that's where just everything fell apart. Like, I was just, I was barely touching my classes. I, I just fell apart on my grades and I just, I, oh, and I just fell apart on my ha money handling because I just kept going deeper into a hole mentally and financially that I didn't realize was affecting me because I, I kept getting more and more depressed. And I thought, oh, maybe it's just because I'm working too hard. I'm working too much overtime. But I mean, it's, it was one factor, but in the back of my mind, I, I just keep pushing the back of my mind and I don't realize how much it affects me. And that's why I want to be better today because, like I said, taking the blinders off the horse, I just, I don't want to be in this position anymore. Like, I just really don't. Here is the good part. One, you are on medication, you're seeking help. Two, you are here because you've recognized you've had a spending and financial issue. So we are going to look for the, through the fin full financial situation so we can see where we are today. We're going to lay out a plan and help support you and encourage you. Everyone's going to encourage you and get you to a place where you're in a better place. So those underlying anxieties around the numbers aren't something. And this is something I haven't really talked about in general on here. But I, I'll, I mean, I don't have bipolar, so I can't relate to that. But I have a pretty severe panic disorder. Order. Yeah. And it's been de de debilitating in my life. And, you know, I seek mental health for that. I take medication for that. And it creates lots of phobias in my life, which have been big struggles. Yeah. Um, so I definitely get the mental health aspect of this. There's some days I can't operate, essentially. Yeah. And it's terrible. So I really get it. I understand it. It doesn't make you any less of a person. What we are going to do is together create a plan where you can get to a place where the numbers are not only not anxiety inducing, but might be exciting to look at because you'll have made progress and then you're going to be making progress in the right direction in terms yeah. of investing and building a portfolio. Yeah. You're already on the right track in terms of your mental health. You've received medication and help. You've reached out to me to come on the show for help regarding finances. You're well and beyond, I would say, the average person, if, if you need to know that. But not that that even matters. The thing is, you're on the right track. So It means a lot to me. It really does. I just, I okay. really needed to hear that. Like, no, it's true. I've needed the kick in the head for a while because, like, you know, I was never really taught finances growing up. And honestly, I think that's a big, like, detriment to the American, like, education system. Nobody gets taught finances ever in school. In state to state, this is district yeah. to district. But, yeah. yeah. But not here in Texas, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it was, I mean... I want to just get better and just not ignore, th I mean, not ignore this anymore. I mean, I mean, I'm not ignoring it now, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm actually wanting to get better for my sake, for my girlfriend's sake. Cause I just want to build a future for myself, my future family. And <sighs> well, that's all that matters. I can sit here all day and say, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Here's what we need to do. If you, if someone right there does not recognize that they need a change and nothing's going to happen, you've already recognized that. Yeah. You said that. So I don't have to do what I typically do where I really dig in and emphasize, hey, this is bad. Why are we doing this? Yeah. It's because a lot of people just sit there and like, ah, you know, it's not great, but it's also not the worst thing ever. You know the situation you're in. You're ready to change. So we're just going to take a look at the situation. We're going to lay it out. Okay. And then we're going to put together a plan. So let's let's move on to what I assume the debts, right? If you want to watch the full episode that this clip came from, click here. Or if you want to watch another clip that you might be interested in, click here. And don't forget to subscribe.